Okay, the next piece of news also has to do with Sikhs. Mm. Um, that uh, Sikhs will no longer be fined for wearing, uh, not wearing rather, bike helmets in uh, Canberra. This is so, this is such nonsense. This is such yeah. nonsense. Um, Ricky, go ahead. So let's tell everybody about it. Australians will no longer be fined for wearing religious headgear instead of bike helmets while bike riding in Canberra under new rules aimed at making cycling more inclusive. The exemption, which came into effect quietly in December, was introduced after a Canberra man wrote to ACT, Australian, I'm not sure what that ACT stands for, road safety minister Shane Rattenbury with a problem. His problem was, he said, that Sikhs struggle to wear standard bike helmets over their turbans, which is our important religious symbols. The decision brings the ACT in line with Queensland, Victoria, Western Australia, and Southern Australia, which all have similar regulations in place. Oh, you have a hard time wearing helmets over your turban? That's your problem! That's your problem! That's why, why is that the society's problem? Why do, why, does, why do people have to bend over backwards to follow your religious rules? Like, that's your religious rules. That's not society's religious rules. Like, what the hell? This is so stupid. Even more egregious, okay, in my opinion, even more egregious is that if you wear a turban or other religious headgear, so hijab or something like that, you, do, you are exempt from the bike helmet law. But if you do not wear religious headgear and you choose not to wear helmet you are fined you have to pay a fine and in some places the fine is up to in victoria it's 207 dollars in queensland it's 126 in tasmania it's 119 and in new south wales which is the only territory that doesn't have this bike helmet exception it's 344 dollars right. so some people are allowed not to wear a helmet and are exempt from paying the fine while other people are forced to pay a fine to me that sounds highly discriminatory yeah this is religious towards privilege. the people who have to pay yeah exactly religious privilege and special pleading and special pleading see this is the danger with sikhism okay because Sikh, the Sikh people are popular among atheists. They're like, oh, I've met so many Sikh people. They're all so nice. They give food to all the poor people. They volunteer. They love everybody. <laughs> the Sikh people show up at the fires in Australia. They volunteer. And no terrorist attacks. Nothing, right? Nothing. Like, oh, they are lovely. Any, by the way, every time you say all pe people, uh, the group of these group of people are all lovely, you're definitely wrong right you're making when you say gr these group of people are bad or good when you make such over generalization like that you're just wrong okay but but the problem is that the Sikh uh, PR machine has been so powerful and people love them and they haven't accept like oh I don't have any problem with Sikhism because they're just so great right uh, why should we have a problem with them well this is why because they're open they're coming they're sneaking in and they're just opening the door to all religious privilege because if you hear like Muslims like if people say like oh a hijabi woman shouldn't don't need to follow this law people are like no, what? No, Islam is like creeping Sharia, Islam this, Islam that. <laughs> and they get like, they, they lose their minds, right? And, and rightfully so, rightfully so. I would lose my mind, R this religious privilege. But then when they see Sikh people, like, well, like, what is their Sikh? Who's the problem? Well, now, now you have precedent for religious privilege. Now you have the law uh, in the country acknowledging that religion apparently... Apparently, the laws apply to everybody unless you have your magic sky daddy telling you that, well, my people are special, you know, back to back off, my people. And people are like, well, your magic guy said this, so I guess you don't have to follow the law. Because when you say, when you say that about the Sikhs, what, then it would be discrimination against Muslims and Christians and Jews if you don't give them the same religious privilege, right? So, well, that's what, this is the problem. Muslims yeah. get it. Muslims are allowed to wear it, although I don't see why you can't wear a bike helmet over a hijab. But yeah. 
you, you're right. You can keep taking this further and further and further. What about Hasidic Jews? Right. And they wear those big hats. Do they not have to wear bike helmets? What about people who are Pastafarians and wear colanders on their head? Right. They don't have to wear bike helmets? I mean, it just becomes ridiculous at this point. Either everybody wears the bike helmet or nobody wears the bike helmet. Right. And nobody wearing it affects public safety. And public safety trumps your magic sky friend. And if you really want to bike and you know you have to wear a helmet, figure out, invent a helmet that fits over your turban. Right. See, this is this is why I always like I get a lot of backlash from people when they when I when people say like, oh, look, this is a news item that Sikh people are donating or some nice Buddhists or some nice Muslims are giving f food to the poor. And I always like don't give credit to the religion. Don't don't let this PR thing work. Give credit to the individuals. This it's not some Muslim people. OK, some Muslim people donated to charity or helping, you know, helping poor people or doing this or that. They are using this as a PR machine for the religion. And this has nothing to do with the religion. These are just good people, okay? I, either they're just doing it because they're good people, or if they're doing it because of their religion, well, they're not good people. They're just following commands, right? But I'm, I think most of them are just individually, you know, just good people by themselves, right? And just be like, oh, some great people. Don't let them use this as a way for a PR for the religion because it has nothing to do with the religion, all right? I'm hoping that these people that are helping, you know, the you know, the fire, you know, helping the fire victims in Australia or this and that. I'm hoping if you take their religion away from them, they're still going to do that, right? And if they're not, then you can then they're not good people. But I'm hoping they're actually that good. So if that's if that's how, that kind of people that they are, that they're good with or without their religion, then don't give the credit to the religion. Don't be like, well, the Sikhism is good then. Or don't give credit to Islam. Or don't give credit to Christianity. Because if, if that's the, if that, if that's the, because I predicted this. This is the agenda. There's an agenda behind this, right? So if people go out and instead of helping, you know, homeless people or fire victims as a religion, they want this they are investing in something for them to withdraw later on, right? This is an investment in something. This is a PR for the religion and it's going to come backfire. You have to call it out. You're like, oh, great that they're helping the homeless people. But remember, Sikhism is nonsense, just like every other religion. Mention that. Don't let them take this because this is how it's going to come and backfire. And now you're opening the door to all sorts of religious privilege, right? Call, call, you know, if you're in Australia, call, you know, call this out. Be like, why, why, why do they, why do I have to follow some laws, and these people have to follow different kind of laws? Why do, wh why do my beliefs doesn't give me any real privilege? Why is it that only and magic, magical r beliefs give you privilege? Go on, sorry. And that's what I found was interesting when I was trying to look for some other discussion about this. I didn't see anything, and again, I I didn't go really really deep. Perhaps maybe there is an Australian, you know, newspapers or something, but I didn't see anybody saying, "Hey, wait a minute, why is there one law for me and another law for religious people?" Right. In my opinion, it's one law for all. Right. Exactly. By the way, and yeah, go on. So I, I, you know, I'm waiting to see, you know. If anyone's going to test that, you know, my, you know, my sincerely held belief is that I don't need a helmet. Yeah, no, it has to, it, it can't just be, <laughs> it can't just be sincerely held belief. It has to be magical, sincerely held belief. Uh, it has to be something with like the, you know, sky daddy or something, or, unless it doesn't count. This is basically, this is the government um, acknowledging divine authority. That's what it does. This is the, another dangerous part of it. You know, basically the government says like beliefs don't make you give you privilege unless it comes from divine authority. So this is the government giving authority and legitimacy to divine authority. And that's extremely dangerous. Uh, GV is saying, Armin, I think it's a PR for their community, not for their religion. Sikhism is a non proselytizing religion. Well, the community is a religious community. What do you mean, GV? Just because they don't proselytize, that doesn't mean... Yeah, they don't want converts, but they are. it's a PR for their community. It's a PR for the Sikh community, which is a religious community. It's a, it's, it's a PR for 
their religion just because your the agenda behind the PR could be different things. So so some PR could be like we want more converts, but some PR is like no, we just want more favors. Um, and it, I would argue even by the proselytizing religions, Christianity, the Christian communities, and Islamic communities, most of their PRs doesn't really care about converts. Most of their PRs is about getting political favor, even even among the Christians and Muslims, right? Muslims don't get most of their numbers from converts. Muslim gets, Muslims get most of their numbers from, you know, birth rates. So they're not very, you know, there's, there's yeah, there's some groups of them that are interested in converting, but uh, converting people to Islam. But that's not most of their invest. Most of their PR is not invested in that. Most of their PR is, uh, you know, on political maneuvers and stuff like that. Let me see what the top comment is. Uh, Kenny saying, I'm sure the turban and uh, and the grace of spirituality will protect their heads from sharp objects or impacts. <laughs> 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 that they won't require to be taken to a hospital or seen by a doctor for something that was 100% preventable. That they won't take the spot um, in the queue for uh, for a person that actually does have need but just be careful guys first of all if you say like oh well this is just darwinism you know it's just choice let them take the risk you're missing the point right first of all it's an inhumane thing to say just because somebody is wrong about like the nature of the universe and believes in some nonsense religion that doesn't mean we don't care about their health we don't want them we don't want them to be taken out of gene pool like that's a, like a social you know darwinism is the force of nature that is not supposed to be social darwin it's not supposed to be some a way that we uh, run societies or anything like that like that's a very cruel way of looking at running society don't ever say that about religious people oh this is just darwinism at play no okay people deserve to be protected whether they're right or wrong about something but another thing, even if you're that selfish or that inhumane, I'm not saying Kenny is saying that, by the way, I just got reminded of, of saying that. Um, even if you are inhumane enough not to think that it's okay for religious people to be taken out of the gene pool, it's such a horrible way of looking at things. But this is about, this is about, more, this is about um, opening the, you know, the floodgates to a whole bunch of other things you know this is about a government recognizing divine authority this is about religious privilege it's not just going to stop at this law you know what you think like when religious people have a precedent that shows that hey different laws for you different laws for us you think you set that president and just were like okay that's all we wanted you think there's gonna be like yeah that's we just wanted to not have helmets when we have bikes great we're happy now no, you just, <laughs> this is going to be re referred to for many other things. You have, you have it on the book. You have it on paper now that this is a, po this is a possible thing that because of my religion, I get to not have follow certain rules. Do you think that's not going to be taken advantage of? Anyways. Let me Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.